When it comes to muscle building supplements, almost all of them fall short, maybe creatine, right? That's been shown to build muscle. But here's an unlikely supplement that's been shown in several studies to improve strength and muscle mass. Probiotics, I'm not making this up. It's actually a meta analysis showing that probiotics increased strength and reduced sarcopenia in older adults. There's another study showing that young men who supplemented with probiotics had better grip strength gains. So it looks like probiotics are not just for gut health, they also help with your athletic performance and muscle. Grip strength? Oh, grip strength. Well, that's a proxy for know? total body strength. So it's an easy way to test strength as they'll take and use grip. Yeah. But they compared them to a placebo hmm. and they had a significant improvement above and beyond placebo from a probiotic. Interesting. Right, Interesting. right. And they think, you know, the speculation. Yeah, what's the theory? Yeah, that? so the speculation has to do with the, there seems to be a two-way communication street between the gut, body gut and the gut, uh, which includes the brain, but also includes muscle. So when you exercise, when your muscles are, are fit and you're building muscle, then sends a signal to the gut, it sends a signal to the brain, but then also the gut does the same thing. And if the gut is healthy, it seems to prime the body for better adaptations to stress, which includes strength training. Hmm. Um, now, the cool thing was that the, like the study on young men, they weren't unhealthy. They were just regular guys that, you know, worked out or they had them, you know, strength train. One group placebo, one group, group uh, took just a traditional probiotic lactobacillus and they saw better strength gains, which is kind of interesting. You know, probiotics. Who you know? Who would have thought? New study. Uh, I can look it up, but I, relatively new. I, I hadn't come across it huh. before. Yeah, I would have thought it would have had to do more with nutrient absorption. Yeah, reduced inflammation. I'm sure that plays a role um, as well. So more like stress adaptation. Yeah, and, and because it's not, I guess, internally fighting all these other factors. Like you sort of absolved some of that. It. it allocated more resources towards uh, adapting muscle. better elsewhere. Yeah. Could, it totally could be. I mean, the, the I mean, it makes, it makes logical sense. What's would be most interesting for me is to see. And I know that's like, these are probably random young men who work out yeah. type of study. Like be interesting to know, like what their, their issues were, or if they even knew they had issues, right? Mm -hmm. Like, did they just take randomly a hundred young men that work out or did they go, let's help a yeah. hundred men that complain of digestive issues or like notice? No, that's, so that was what I thought too. I thought, okay, maybe it was, um, no, they took just random. Yeah. They so. took 30 healthy males, uh, age 20 to 40. And, and they were assigned hmm. to either the control group or to a, what they call TWK 10, which is, uh, you know, the, the group that they gave the probiotic to. And the, like, again, the grip strength in the group that took the, uh, what they call heat uh, killed probiotic. Uh, so it wasn't even live probiotic showed, um, it was lacto plantibacillus plantarum. It's a common, um, bacterial fine probiotics. Um, it helped improve their strength gains. And then the other study was done on older adults. And this, this is a systemic review, a meta-analysis. So this one took lots of study, lots of studies, and they found that it was correlated or connected to better muscle strength gains and uh, overall muscle mass, which is kind of yeah, wild. It's especially interesting if they're all healthy and they don't have any reported um, types of like problems with their gut and, and you know, any, cause I, I would, that would assume be obvious, that, right? yeah, it'd yeah. be obvious. And plus I would assume the majority of people have, oh, un they have unreported issues that they don't, they don't like haven't tested for or are just ignorant about. Well, I, th I think that's, to me, that's one of the most uh, glaring things about this study is that you have what they were, you know, quote unquote, healthy males but the truth is they all probably had some sort of underlining gut issue that's going on. Like, I mean, how often do you, you know, find that out for a family or a friend that's like trying to get to the bottom of why they're not seeing results. And they're telling you, I do this and I do that and I do this. Yeah. And it's like, Oh, have you, I think it, it, it might be more like, um, you know, like they'll do a study. They do, there was a study that showed that like one isometric contraction a week boosted strength by 20%. So everyone's like, Oh, that's all you got to do. It's like, no, it's because people are so, unhealthy and inactive that just one contraction. Yeah. It makes a big difference. Yeah. Like, uh, like community. we, we're supposed to be, well, I don't know, supposed to be, but for most of human history, we, we were, we were, you know, in contact with a lot more 
of these beneficial bacteria, both from our mothers, that's where you get a lot of them, right? Through traditional vaginal birth, mm -hmm. non-exposure to tons of antibiotics, which now, I mean, you know, cattle are fed antibiotics and antibiotics are sprayed um, on our plants, glyphosates in particular, which I kind of like antibiotics. Um, and our environments are hyper clean, right? That's why they find, why they think they find that kids that grow up with animals or on farms are far less likely to develop autoimmune issues. Mm. So I think it's more a case of we growing up in the modern world, you probably need to supplement yeah. with beneficial bacteria. Isn't there, there's a study about that with pets, right? Yes. Because of yeah, the yep. type of bacteria you get exposed to. Yeah. If kids are raised, children raised with pets are less likely, significantly less likely to develop autoimmune issues than kids that are not raised with pets and kids on farms are the least likely yeah. the Amish. Oh, there's yeah. like very, very low rates of uh, autoimmune issues. Wish it mm. would have helped me. Didn't yeah. help me. <laughs> well, I wonder how much, you know, what's funny. I, I, I might've been way worse. Oh God. You I know, mean, who knows? cause you grew up a lot of animals, right? Yeah. Yeah. And on a farm, you know what I'm yeah. saying? We yeah. I grew up working on a farm, well, at least in my, you know, early teen years. Were right? you given a lot of antibiotics as a kid? You know, that's a question for my mom. That's a good question. Because uh, our I, generation, was, I, I, you know, oh, yeah, you know, define a lot, right? I like do, vitamins. I do know, I do remember getting sick when I was younger, and I do remember taking antibiotics. Uh, how often? I don't, you know, because our generation, it's different now. Now, if you're a kid, now doctors are like, well, let's let's see, and often ear infections are not a back, you know, bacterial infection or sinus infection is not necessarily a bacterial. When we were kids, they threw from, at, that at everything. If yeah. you went in with any infection. They didn't care. It was just antibiotics. Mm -hmm. So I was on antibiotics a lot. Yeah. My kids, my three-year-old, I think we've only, he's ever only taken antibiotics once. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when That's I was, like my kids, yeah. when I was a kid, by the time I was three, I think I, I'd been on them so many times. Yeah, I, for probably, every damn I, I would assume I was, I, I don't know though. Cause I don't, I don't recall. Did they, in the study, did they talk about, um, which brand of probiotic or no, what kind? No, they're using just traditional, the, the ones that we know that are beneficial, the bifida, bifido strains, lactobacillus, uh, type strain, lacto strains. Those are the ones you'll find. Um, cause those are the ones that studies show that are, are beneficial across the board. But there's def there's a varying degrees of quality, right? Like dead, even dead good bacteria seem to have a positive effect. So mm. you could take a probiotic, and most of them will do this. They'll deliver dead bacteria to your gut because your gut will destroy it, or it's already dead when it's in the capsule. Mm -hmm. And then the the refrigerator ones, which I used to think that's the that's where you should get the refrigerator ones. Like by the time you put them in your mouth, your body's not refrigerated. The bacteria dies, gets destroyed by the acid or whatever. Mm -hmm. You still get some benefit. Now, if you get a good, like seed does this, right? This is why we work with seed. They actually have developed this model uh, that shows the capsule traveling through the digestive tract and coming to, you know, it gets to the part where you want the probiotics to be delivered and they're still alive and intact because of the way the capsules are designed. Is the coating designed. that they use? Yeah, it's the way the capsules are designed and the way that they, they put the bacteria in there. And so you'll get, I mean, that's why the difference between seed and other pro probiotics is like, yeah, it's light years, substantial. Light Isn't years that patented? For, didn't they patent that too? That but, whole process. Yeah, yeah. It's like unique. So to not them. just anybody can do yeah. that. But I mean, so. you know, muscle gains. There's other studies that show. I mean, I, I talked about this on the show. Probiotics on depression, anxiety. That's wild. Where they see a, 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 a pretty, I mean, a measurable impact on people with depression just by supplementing with. A probiotic. Well, they've yeah associated that a lot with like your gut bacteria, yeah, right? how it influences your mood and and a lot of factors like that. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And then uh, like birth control uh, affects your your gut microbiota, your your you know the microbiota on your skin. You know, um, a lot of things do. So it's interesting to see that. And then of cool. course, like I said, when what they're finding now is uh, e each generation is we're getting less and less. Um, I don't know what you would call it, like a variety or uh, the type of bacteria that we have in our gut. We're finding is starting to decrease over generation over generation because it's less in this generation. Then they then they have children, and then as the child gets born, they adopt a lot of it from their mother. So they're starting from a lower standpoint, and then they have kids, and so this is why you may be seeing the spike in like food allergies and autoimmune issues. It just started compounding. 
uh, over time. It's so. funny. It's just like studies like this. It just always points back to like when your body's like overall healthier, you just perform better. Of course. It's like as simple as that, but the, we need like these studies for uh, people to get on board with like trying to improve other systems of their body. Otherwise they just like, I'm just going to keep taking, you know, whatever anabolic thing yeah. enhancer I can <laughs> uh, to get stronger. Right. You know, meanwhile, their guts like just, violently like speaking to him <laughs> and being neglected today's giveaway is maps power lift to enter to win leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it subscribe to the channel and turn off notifications oh sorry turn on notifications if you do all of those things uh we will let you know in the comment section if you won access to maps power lift also this month's program sale maps anywhere half off and maps hit also half off if you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Speaking uh, of gut, you know how common uh, parasites are? I looked this up uh, over the weekend. I didn't realize how common they were. Uh, even I you you'd be looking up parasites. Even, oh, so <laughs> so what you, you do? Dude, oh, I look up parasites. Leisurely. Oh, dude. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're not as uncommon as you think in, in modern. If you eat sushi on a regular basis. Uh, you said this. So you I probably have a parasite. So I pretty much have one. <laughs> yeah, See? Dude. Chicken nuggets aren't that bad of an option yeah. now, right? Am I right? <laughs> no parasites. Shouldn't that have came up on my uh, all the stuff we've done with Cabral, though, by now? No, Should not we? unless you do, like, a poop test. So we need to do that one. Yeah. That's why I've been wanting to do that one. That's the one. I'm going to be so mad got... when he's, like, a bunch of stuff comes out, and he's like, oh. This Adam wants to draw some heat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've, never, I've never done one of those because, like, you get a poop in something and then mail it. Yeah. You know that, right? I've yeah. done that once. Yeah. You did? Or, yeah. So what do you do? Like like you poop in like We're a We're not train? talking about when you put in a paper bag and you light it on fire in front <laughs> no, of somebody's no, house, no. Justin. No, that's, <laughs> that's <laughs> he's like, totally I'm different. I've What's done that, that called, by the way? <laughs> I don't know what you call poop it. Poop bag. Is there a name for that? I don't know. The flame that's poop a classic, bag, dude. <laughs> yeah. Has anybody ever done that in here? Yeah. Has anybody ever done that? I did the pee one. I did it with dog shit. Yeah, one time. Really? We lit on fire? and then Yeah. So people don't know this. The reason why you light it on fire is that people person opens the door and it. they stomp it out, dude. Yeah, yeah, get poop yeah, all over. That's yeah. terrible. <laughs> I mean, that's terrible. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so how, how does it work? You you poo in a tray and then you put it in a bag or something. This is, I mean, and then you freeze it, right? And then you mail it, or do you yeah. just send it. Well, yeah, you just, I mean, you sort of, you, yeah, you collect it. You, you didn't have you didn't have your wife catch it. Oh, no, I, 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 I mean, this is all awesome. self. Uh, <laughs> Let me tell Katrina. Hey, Doctor Cabral, so we have to do this. Yeah, can you give me a hand? Yeah, like, I'm gonna need she you to just do this. sits right under you. Like, oh, come on! <laughs> 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 hey, you guys took it here. Yeah, oh, I'm gonna, like, gonna finish yeah. it. But then you gotta like freeze it, right? Yeah. That's yeah, the weird to, part. The, the gross part is you got to have it in your refrigerator. That's the part that's disgusting. <laughs> your, yeah, your freezer. If someone opens your freezer, uh -huh. what's this? <laughs> There's some chocolate. Oh, Where do you put it? Do you put it next to the meat? Do you put it yeah. next to like... Dude. It's its own know, section, dude. dude. Oh, that's disgusting. It's its own section. Know. That's gross. What happened? It was awkward. What happened to your hand, Yeah, what's dude? up with the oh. finger over here? Is that, a, yeah. is that done from your, your nurse wife too, or is that you? Oh, yeah. This is this is the nurse wife. Oh, Actually, wow. I, you were fine when I saw you yesterday. It must have happened afterwards. It did, yeah, yeah. Because so we, we had dinner, and like I'm not used to eating at three o'clock in the afternoon yeah. for dinner. So I was hungry. That's what happens when you have little kids? Bro. <laughs> You're going to bed at seven. Right? Like, yeah. I'm like, it's dinner time. I'm like, okay, cool. We were playing. We had a good time at, yeah. at your place. Uh, but I I got home. I was like still hungry. And so I was just like, yeah, I don't want to eat like a full meal or anything. So you ate your finger? What'd you do? Yes, yeah, so I got hungry and. <laughs> Yeah, I'll get to that actually. Uh, so I was like, decided to like make a little spread of cheese and and uh, deli meats and naturally, and it was so stereotypical. Uh, and so I had like this chunk of mimolette, um, still there, and it's a hard cheese. It's like has this rind on it that's like a cannonball. Like you have to like really, um dig at it mm -hmm. to be able to get like you know some of the cheese out. And so anyway, I'm like slicing it and, and getting to the point where like. It was pretty low, so I had to like really get in like at a, at a certain angle where it was like kind of down, and I knew this was just it was just stupid. It was stupid. I should have just left it. Like I had enough. Like everything was fine. But I was using this knife, and we have a really sharp knife set that like uh, we we bought a while ago, and this one was like it could get through this hard cheese like no problem. And so I actually hit a spot, and it jumped up across oh. hit hit my middle finger and sliced it all the way from uh the uh, from the fingernail all the way like, it, it, to where it like it was almost flopped oh and it was like Did you get stitches no 
So I was like, I was going to do that this morning and go to urgent care, but I was like, you know, I'm going to ride it work. out and see. Yeah, let, let it. <laughs> I lost a lot of blood last night. Uh, <laughs> wow. Over this. And so that's not even the worst part. So that was what I saw. I was like, oh man, that's a lot of blood. And then Courtney's like, oh, like runs and grabs stuff and is trying to like, you know, stop the bleeding. And, um, and I just, and then I looked at my hand and I had all this blood on my hand. I'm like, oh, that's wiped that off. And uh, I look at my ring finger and I, I looked at the tip and I literally cut off like a huge chunk of my, the tip of my finger. Oh. And so it like went like across and chopped off like a chunk and then sliced into this side. And this one, like once I noticed that, I was like, ooh, like I, it hurt. Like it was like very sensitive. Uh, cause like the tips, you know, when you feel things, that's like where yeah. you got like the nerves. Yeah. Right? yeah. So is it enough to where it's not going to grow back or are you going to have a weird looking finger? You I think like, it's going to be a little weird. Oh, weird. And so I was a little you already like, got stubby fingers. Now you're <laughs> really going to have little nubs. I do. I'm going to be like nubby now. <laughs> so you know, the, the funny part, which is like, I was trying to be like calm. Everybody was freaking out. My kids like were like, Oh my God, are you okay? I'm like, I'm fine. Everything's going to be fine. Like just bleeding <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> And, uh, like, so I kind of was making jokes to kind of lighten it up and Everett goes over to it. I'm like, why don't you just go eat? Cause he was trying to get in on the cheese with me and like all this. And so he goes over and he's like eating <laughs> from the thing. Oh, God, and then blood all over. later, like <laughs> no, Courtney, Courtney's cleaning up. She found the little chunk of oh, my come finger. On. Oh, oh, come on, bro. dude. On yes. the cutting board. You just lost and I was like, good thing, didn't, <laughs> oh. <laughs> good thing you didn't eat that. Oh, oh. that. But oh, I was like, I wonder like where it today. went. You know, I have no oh. idea. Like, there it was. Oh. Wow. So, Just its finger. Oh. Dude, you know what I'm pissed about is like, I was really getting into guitar and I was like, uh, I was oh, getting, yeah. like, and I wasn't telling you guys, but I was like, like every day, like I was like drilling and I was doing things to improve and try and get back, you know, to what I could play. Cause I was like obsessed over it for a while. And like, I, you know just decade in between started to suck and i'm like ah maybe it's going to grow back so tough now that you, play. you know what i mean <laughs> this is the beginning of your new career maybe maybe but i was just like oh great like all my progress is like completely you know it's funny ruined. we were just talking off air how serendipitous everything in this business has been yeah. maybe that kept you from being great <laughs> yep you dude, guys you're not supposed to leave us. I was this close. Day I was one, this close, uh, dude. You know, to if, world tour. If they never then, broke nope. up this band, it would be Justin trying yeah. to go solo, wanting to start his own thing and <laughs> yeah. tour. We didn't tell you, but when you left, Adam and I were discussing this. We're like, he's getting too good at the guitar. Yeah. So we did a little voodoo doll. <laughs> cut your little finger tip <laughs> off. <laughs> just had to go crazy. Damn. You so, guys, uh, you guys what's, are behind this. It's a uh, plan to, to give, go back to the hospital later on, or what, are you just going to like let it ride? Or? I think. I think I might. I mean, what's I, the wife saying? Come on, she, we know, she was like, we know Justin. She's like, I think you need to go get stitches, and I was like, well, we'll see, you know. And so she's probably gonna hammer me about it when I get home. And yeah, I'm say, you don't get flesh eating bacteria again. Yeah, no, no you would know by that. now. This shit would be. Well, I do know swollen. by now. I know. Yeah, it's not, it's, swollen, it's it not like infected. It. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just like a big flop. Just walk it off. Yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just rub it out. Put some, yeah. put some grass on. Put it. some yeah. glue and uh and some uh, duct tape. Exactly, that's dude. Dad, like super glue is like your perfect uh, um <laughs> yeah, remedy that to my, that. That was my dad with every dog we ever had. Doesn't yeah. matter what the dog had. <laughs> let me, he'll eat some grass. He'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they puke it up. It's like a natural. <laughs> what do you mean? His legs broken. No, <laughs> like, he feeds bro, grass. Yeah, he'll eat some grass. <laughs> he'll eat some grass. Too. He'll be fine, bro. Yeah, he's hilarious. just fine. Yeah, that is so true. It was great. It was great having you guys over yesterday. I had I had a house full house. Huh? Dude, so many little kids. So you guys didn't invite Doug and I. There were so not. I didn't invite jealous, them. jealous because we hung out together. <laughs> no, I invited Doug, I and then I thought you were in Reno. It's like a bunch of high school girls. But it's over always here, you know open. Yeah. Like, hey, shh, don't tell Doug and Adam. That's stupid. Doug <laughs> was supposed <laughs> to come over. No, I was supposed to. You were supposed to come <laughs> over. Oh, so yeah. just me. It's I'm just the, you. Dude. I just me. I'm Sorry, <laughs> Adam. That's the only one. Cut no, out. it's every Sunday. Open door. Anybody right. come over? We had a good. I'll put the address on my Instagram for people. Not any. Not anybody. Yeah. No, that would be like. Hey, that would be like a dirty prank to do. Like Dude. when you're like uh, friends that have a big following, right? To fuck with oh, them yeah. like that. Like the time uh, you put my phone number in the bathroom yeah, that one time? Yeah. Adam? <laughs> <laughs> He for a good put, time. He literally put my phone number <laughs> in the bathroom, dude. That was fucked up, man. Sal Stabone. That was, yeah, uh, salami. That was messed up. Uh, yeah. Hey, speaking of fingers, dude, did you watch- He's uh, great. Whoa, I can't wait for this transition. Oh, listen. Have you heard of the whole Kate Middleton conspiracy? 
You know who that is? No. The princess or whatever. She's in the royal family. Okay. And then people hadn't seen her. Like she had, for some reason, disappeared out of, uh, you know, out of the public. Yeah. People were speculating. So she apparently, I'm just going to hijack just yes. this one part. Yeah. So uh, this picture in Vanity Fair was like her with like these kids. Yes. Oh, I did see the those are her. Thing. Those are her kids, by the way. And everybody's okay, been kids. photoshopping things in it and stuff like that. Yeah, it? well, yeah. They, no, the photo itself. The photo itself. Yeah, they doctored. Yeah, they doctored it. Yes, because you could see this hand doesn't match that, or what's going on? It's not a real photo. Yeah, yeah. So everybody's speculating what happened to her. Where is she? What's going on? So then she comes out and she does this video where she, you know, unfortunately she has cancer, yeah, and they like some privacy or whatever. Well, anyway, internet sleuths uh, took AI detecting technology because you apparently have there's these apparently these these companies or these apps where you could play a video and it'll tell you the probability that the video is real or if it's AI. Oh. And people were doing this to the video of her coming out and saying she had cancer and they were coming out with like 93%, oh, it's it's AI. And then people were zooming in on the video of her talking and there's one part in particular. Did you see it? Justin? No, no, you you described Maybe it. Maybe Doug can find it. it yet. While she's talking, she has a ring on her finger. Halfway through her talking, the ring disappears. <laughs> and then the ring pops back on. Yeah, dude. So everybody's like, what is what? really going on? So the conspiracy theory is that that she's one of the she's a sacrifice. One of the royal family. Apparently they they are part of some they worship. I don't know. What? Yeah. And what? that 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 uh Princess Diana was the first one and then they're doing another one with her or whatever. And they don't want anybody to know. I don't know about all that. All I do know is why is her ring, her finger, dis the ring disappearing? All I know right is hand? wasn't she? Well, it wasn't her because it was the other, um, the other uh, son that moved to Canada mm. or whatever. I don't they know. were like the ostracized ones, oh. right? So she was, but was she like in opposition with the crown and their agendas? I mean, that's what this, the, the conspiracy theorists are all saying. Okay. But what's weird to me is, because when I hear all this, I'm like, whatever, dude. Okay, right. fine. Yeah. AI tech, you know, detecting technology. Who knows? But no, watch the video. You see her hand while she's talking, and the ring literally disappears and then pops back well, on. that's the weird part, because two, look, like... Look, look, look at this. I don't know if you could, you could push play on that, Doug, see if that... Yeah, let me if, see. If that works. It's a nice ring. See, watch this. She's talking. Oh, it's gone. Well, I mean, it's behind her knee. No, 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 no. That's the ring finger, bro. Okay, well, oh, okay, it's there. It's, it's not gone. there. It's gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's gone. gone. And then boom, pops now back it's on. Here again. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, so yeah. like, they're noticing little details like that, which is weird. Why well, would they do that? It reminds me of you. Still haven't seen that uh, series yet, right? With the octopus murders. Just started it. Okay. And, and you know the way you know typical. We got little kids, so we're gonna watch like oh, twenty yeah. minute chunks. Sure. But uh, we watched the first twenty five <laughs> sure. minutes last yeah. night. It's getting good. Well, the one part I want you to watch is <laughs> like like JFK Adam can kind of jump Bro, in. Bro, yeah, that's crazy. Because I want to see the original film again because yeah. I know that uh, I well that what they said in the in the video was that that was the original film. Which you look at this tree and it's like suspended. So it obviously like had been doctored, yeah. Because yeah. the tree like Has no should be in the ground. Yeah, it's like floating. not in the ground. It's like floating. And so you're like, huh? That causes question. And then and then they showed what they claim to be the real video. And you're just like, You oh said it was a God. driver turned around and, yeah. and hit him. <laughs> yeah. And shot him. Yeah. yeah. When Ron Paul got interviewed, he said, uh, he was asked, um, you know, when do you think it all went bad? And he goes, JFK got assassinated. He goes, that's it. After that, everything went, went south. Well, I mean, if you watch that show, I mean, it was happening before before that it's just gotten worse yeah. well worse. if you read about people should look this up if you really want to get into cool. this there's a book called um the creature <laughs> at jekyll island yeah. yep. read about how the federal reserve was created yeah. true story yeah. it's all real yeah, yeah um that's what got me down the rabbit hole was that book yeah dude yeah. and how like they didn't want to allow federal reserve an official one and then the people who were supposed to vote on it or, or vote against it how they died and Speaking of the Fed, did you see? I sent. I think I sent you the video of the cryptocurrency that's getting all bought up right now. Did you see? That's what. Yeah. So what? So explain it. So BlackRock apparently is buying a lot of Bitcoin. Yeah. Which is oh, one of the reasons why is? the price of it's mm, going through the roof. Yeah. What's the What's the point? I mean, what do you mean? What's the? I mean, they see. I think they see the writing on. I mean, oh. I sent that clip to you, and I think they see the writing on the wall. That it, or I mean, who knows what they're telling us and what they really believe is they just they see the cycles of it. 
and no, it's going to make a run again. And it's a, a place. I don't remember what percentage. Um, I saw a, an interview where they talked about what percentage of their investments were moving into that, but it was a pretty substantial uh, piece. I mean, it, in comparison to in the past, what they had done. Yeah, so huge jump. Yeah. So they, uh, whether they're directly uh, responsible for the huge spike or, uh, you know, by proxy because they did it and everybody else is now following. Right. So uh, do you guys have a, so I have a story. I think a lot of people have similar stories like this. I have a, I was almost a billionaire story <laughs> with Bitcoin. <laughs> you know, because no, Adam hey. would be if you remember your password, right? <laughs> bro, bro I, so I, when I used to have my studio, mm -hmm. so this had, to, this has got to be at least, I missed 10 years ago, 12 uh, years ago, maybe. I miss Google and Netflix bad like that. So I had, so, I so check two, this out. I, I had a client like who was a hardcore libertarian. And this is when I was really learning about, you know, you know, politics and government, all that stuff. And his name is Martin. I'll give him a shout out right now. And I remember Martin coming to me and talking to me about blockchain technology. Mm. And you got to get this thing called Bitcoin. And he bought a specific computer to mine Bitcoin. Mm. And I remember him being like, dude, just buy, just buy like a thousand dollars worth. Like who cares? You never know, whatever. And it, back then you, it wasn't easy to get it on. There wasn't a Coinbase or whatever. It was, yeah, yeah. And it was, you guys know me. It's too much, if it's too much of a pain in the ass, I'm not going to do it. Right. So I'm like, ah, eh. Nah, I don't know. But I was just close to buying like a couple thousand dollars worth, which today would be worth a couple hundred million dollars. Yeah. At mm -hmm. least yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. had I bought it. I was yeah. so close. I miss Netflix and I miss Google. Out, I had a, I trained a girl who was like the, uh, and this was like when nobody knew what Netflix was. They were still doing the- Mail in. Mail in the DVDs and stuff like that. And she, I remember her telling me like, oh, this is going to be where they're going and where it's heading. And I remember like her telling me about it. I'm like, oh, this is brilliant. Mm -hmm. And this was just at a time where I wasn't buying any stock. I didn't have a lot of extra money laying around. I thought, oh, I should go. She's like, you know, you should take just a couple grand, same thing, and just go buy, you know, a few shares. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, say, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I missed that one. And obviously that would have been worth a bajillion dollars now. And then uh, Google, same thing. I, I remember when they, I had a training another client. She was an executive for Knight Ritter, which is the uh, San Jose Mercury News place. Mm -hmm. And she just, you know, she said, "Hey, you know, Google is going to go, and they're going to, they're going to change the game and everything." And and I think it was like they You're like now you They opened. I think they opened at thirty <laughs> or sixty dollars or somewhere in that range. Wow. You know, and she's like, "You should buy a few thousand dollars worth worth that." And, yeah, again, the behemoth. Yeah, I know. I my, know. My dad's favorite. Then you story. find me spending, you know, dropping ten thousand dollars in Couve because I think no, that's, oh, <laughs> that's your buddy, dude. Yeah, I, I did too. Thanks. <laughs> Adam. That's Brendan. <laughs> oh, that's Brendan, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I think you got. I didn't know I, what it was. I just yeah, like, you got me all hyped had, on it. Oh, you got me all. Sometimes hyped your on closing it. ability is too good. Oh yeah. man, just in, I, I ignored oh, you guys on that one. Huh? Yeah. Did you leave us on that one? Yeah, I ignored you guys. On yeah. that one. Doug, Doug got <laughs> Doug got hooked too. I think I got all of you guys. Smells fishy. I got the worst though. I think I put the most, and uh, so of course, like, my my dad's got a story like that. He used to own. Remember, my dad, you know, no, I have a, no, I, he's no education, poor immigrant, saved his money, worked hard, and he's like his his like one of his dreams was to buy. He owned his house. They owned my mom and dad owned their house, and he's like, you know, buying property. I heard that's a good thing to do. And he bought mm -hmm. a fourplex in San Jose. Oh my god! Mm, okay, wow. Yes. He had a fourplex in San Jose. Would that be worth it? And that? well, there was a there was a recession. Millions. And now my dad being, I mean, he was like I said, you know, blue collar worker, four kids supporting them. My mom didn't work at the time. Later she was a teacher. He would be the guy who would do the repairs. He would show up, he'd fix the sink, he'd fix the door, he'd fix it. So he would come home from work, which he already worked. He was hard. just like, this is too much work for me. And then he would money. go yeah, and wow. he would fix things for them. Uh, and then there was a recession. So they were like, my dad was like, it was costing them a couple hundred bucks a month to uh, keep this fourplex. Yeah. And so my dad was like, ah, oh, you know, I want to, I want to, I think I want to get rid of it. Now here's his story. If he when he tells a story, he says he he lost a lot of money. Cause right now the fourplex would be worth I don't know, $6 million or something like that, or, you know, whatever he'd be re easily bringing in a hundred thousand or, you know, a couple hundred grand a month and in, in, excuse me, a year in just rent. But here he says, he's happy. He sold it because we were supposed to travel to Italy, just me and my dad. And I was only maybe nine at the time. Mm -hmm. And he was trying to sell it. And there was a recession. Nobody was buying. Then a buyer came forward and said, I'll buy it. And my dad was able to kind of break even. Mm. So he canceled his trip to sell and break even. And he says it was a, it was a blessing because we were supposed to go, everybody was preparing for us to be there and they had this big meal 
and there was some, there was this like, I don't know what it was. It was like this vegetable that they had collected up in the hills. They, were, they had prepared it for us. We didn't go. We didn't have the big celebratory dinner. Anyway, everybody who ate that dinner, many of them uh, ended up in the hospital because there was some pesticide or some chemical that was sprayed on the vegetable. Had a nine-year-old kid like me eating that, I might have died. So my dad says, oh my save God. your life. Uh, so that's so the story. My so, stepdad okay. has two stories where he lost he lost out huge. The first one was, so he was a, 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 car, a carpenter, contractor, right? And he had his own business. And he built uh, in, in Oakdale, where we used to live at that time, a uh, bank called Bank of Stockton, I think is the name of the bank. You can look it up to see how many how many branches they have now. But it was like one of the first ones, right? One of the first ones. And uh, when he was done with the job, they still owed him a couple thousand dollars. And they offered him a bunch of shares in the company oh, instead. Oh, no. And of course, you know, back then, yeah, like, no, I want like, it's like, yeah, $2,000 for my family was like, no, we need this. And so he turned it down. And I mean, I remember when he told this story, you know, a de two decades ago, how much it would have been worth if, uh, but it's got to be so much more now. So he, he missed on that one. Then he had another situation um, where, and this is a little more or a little less uh, or more unfortunate, but like kind of like who knows how many now? Wow. It looks like they have quite a few branches. Yeah, yeah. It was like one of the first Probably ones. about 20 maybe, yeah, yeah. 15 so, or 20. Uh, the sec this, he was working for PG&E. And uh, again, hard worker, always been talented in, uh, you know, like construction work and efficient like that. My stepdad was known for that. Right. And so they had him climbing poles earlier because he was one of the best at it, even though he wasn't certified to do it. And they're just like, oh, Larry will do it. He's, he's so good. at just have him do it. And he fell off a of pole and landed on his back. And he was like permanently partially disabled forever mm -hmm. from that. And so he had this massive lawsuit with PG&E and he ended up settling and taking like 50 grand instead of actually taking the Pursuing it? Yes. Uh, I mean, you're talking about something that should have been. I mean, he's like, he was he was diagnosed permanently, partially disabled from it. It would have been way more He was than bedridden that. for almost oh, yeah. a half a year, a year plus out of work. Out way easy on that. Oh, yeah. I he and it was they threw 50 grand at him and he jumped all over it and, and took it instead of like taking Dang. it the distance. And I mean, that would have been massive oh that's massive. there's a lot of situations like that where people aren't familiar with the legal system yeah and i um, mean think about that you're you're climbing a pole okay where it with for a, not a, a union job yeah oh, yeah you're not certified and you would got at least 10 times the, uh, oh the yeah mm -hmm. at least at least 10 times at least i think oh yeah i'm not a lawyer <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure we'll somebody some li somebody comment. listening right now will comment it will say yeah, yeah i'm no, an internet lawyer yeah. yeah i don't know exactly what it was but i sure should know it was more yeah. than 50 grand <laughs> <laughs> speaking of banks i'm surprised you guys didn't know and i'm uh, gonna tell okay. the audience just for people who don't know the one of the biggest banks in the, in the country bank of america originally uh, and i know you guys laughed at bank me of italy, I made this up, uh, it was the bank of italy we were walking it's and so I, funny i told you guys this, you guys were making fun of me you thought oh yeah right bank of italy it was AP Giannini was the founder mm -hmm. of Bank of America. He was, and he created Bank of Italy to give loans to Italian immigrants because they were not giving them money to start businesses. Yeah, I was just down in San Diego. They have basically a little shrine of uh, for him yep. in Little Italy there. No way. Yeah. <laughs> what an interesting fact. So were the colors different too? And did it originally start in Italy? Dude, look and up Bank in? of Italy. No, it started here. So it did start here. So I he was started in well, San Diego. San, yeah, he wanted to, again, there were a lot of Italian immigrants. and Who would have thought, like, you would think that it was a terrible name for a bank here? Like, well, it was because he was tar it was for the immigrants. Yeah, no, was, I get it. You're right. That's yeah. why he changed it to me. Well, yeah. Of course, right. I get it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I, I yeah. get what his plan was. At one Smart. point, he's like, oh, okay, I get it. Yeah. He he incorporate to, everybody. He had to start with this group and then move on. But yeah. back in those days, in fact, there's a movie that's out right now. I, I want to go watch called Cabrini. I haven't seen it yet. I, I think I showed you guys the, yeah, you should. the trailer. The trailer. Back in those days, uh, it you know, the Italian immigrants were really um, discriminated against and looked down upon yeah, uh, yeah. by uh, by everybody else that was here. And so bank of, he created that bank because nobody wanted to give him money. Actually founded in San Francisco. San Francisco. Mm. There you go. Mm. That's right. I should have known that. Anyway, I got to tell you guys, my, my son is so funny. He, 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 he wakes up the other day and he sleeps in, never sleeps in. So my three-year-old, 6 a.m., he's up. I don't care what, he just always 6 a.m., he wakes up. <laughs> and he's just, that's it, ready to go. Well, he slept till like 7.45, which is just, Jessica and I were like, this is like a is gift. Is something wrong? Yeah, is he not feeling good? <laughs> yeah, we're watching the camera and everything. Like, this is a gift from God. This is amazing, right? He comes out and he sees that the sun is up because every time he wakes up, 
it's dark outside. So the sun is up. And he comes out and he's like, wow, I slept so good. And he's walking around all proud or whatever. And then later on that night, you know, we're, we're going back to bed. And he goes, he goes, Papa, how come? He goes, I slept really good, but I'm, I'm still not like you. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, I'm not big. I'm like, oh. <laughs> He's, I'm sorry, buddy. Can I tell him you grow when you go to sleep? You know? He thought he was going to wake up. Uh, and he's, oh, my God, I slept. He's the same height. He's all disappointed. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he's not the same size oh my God, so as funny. his dad. I know. It's cute. It's cute you know stuff. how I do the, uh, right, right now? This is funny because I've been sharing this process, right, with the the books and like getting him to. Yeah. yeah. So the newest thing I bought, I bought this um like a, one of those, um, what do you call the rock shiner kit things? You know, where they tumble the rocks and then they you do a bunch what of- What a great idea. I got to get that. I know. So you just collect rocks outside? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because So what made me do it was huh. he's already been collecting rocks like crazy. So I was like, I oh, he's, he's going to love this, right? So I get I get a video and I'm like, I'm like, hey, check this out. And I'm like showing him. He's like, oh, that's so cool. I was like, do you want this? And he's like, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, that's good. this is going to be like 14 books or some of that. He's like, okay, okay. So we, uh, I, I buy it. So I always buy it, right? I buy it right away, and then I, I set it up. So it's up on my counter right now, and it's got the, the books that he's got to read. And this has been up there for like two weeks. And uh, the other day, Katrina was like, granted, my son has had like the flu for like the last week, so he's a little off right now and everything. So she tried to get him the other day when they're home sick. She's just like, hey, you want to you wanna get your rock thing? and You, you want to read some books? Eh, no, I don't feel like reading right now. <laughs> but, it, but it blows me away that he hasn't bugged for it. He doesn't ask for it. He just it's sitting, got, what a great it sits attitude. Right, it sits right there on the counter. <laughs> like I'm like I want it to like entice him. I want him to go like, Daddy, I really want that. So I go, Oh, we gotta read our books. But he's like, he's already been. We've asked him like twice. You give been, him a loan. Yeah, just get yeah. the thing, dude. <laughs> yeah, like, dude. Yeah. So he hasn't even he hasn't done anything towards it this week. And now, like I said, granted, he's been really sick, and so it's like you know he's off and so i'm not we're not pushing the issue but i thought it was so hilarious that this thing came in i thought man i don't know if i could have been like that if i was a kid and i wanted something and then i got and i saw it like in front I, of you yeah either one i'm driving I you, snuck it yeah i'm either well, i'm sneaking it driving you crazy or i'm doing whatever it takes to get it <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it's no yeah, big deal you want it i know i've been through the same process with everett and like i remember telling you guys about this like grandiose plan he had for like buying a, a, an arcade game for the house and like oh that's right and so he was like saving and stacking he was like maybe almost three quarters of the way there he was like a couple hundred dollars and like you know people were kind of slowly contributing to it and it's like a big like it's such a lofty goal you know for him to be able to do it and like was doing all the chores and you know it would burn out and then it would come back and he would kind of make a little progress come back again well apparently like one of his friends actually has the the game and he was over there and he was like playing it. he's like you know like he's over playing it. it he's like over <laughs> it he's like you know i just i don't you know i'm kind of glad that i didn't um you know finish. i'm like oh this isn't the lesson i was trying to you know teach you with this like yeah, but yeah. at the same time i respect that like it's that's you know, how i feel it's about impulsive it. that's how i feel you know, about yeah. it too is i'm like uh I'm like, well, this was not the desired outcome. The yeah. idea was that he would read more and more when he sees this. But then at the same time, too, I'm like, well, you know, the fact he's not asking for it, he's not bugging me and stuff like that. Like, okay, yeah. you know. I'm like, you still have your money. I mean, you know, like this, you can use it somewhere else. This for sure is the part. I mean, my son's only four going on five. Uh, you know, it's hard at this age to see yourself in him, you know, like little things here and there, right? Yeah. Like we're we're similar. This is an area that I think I've brought up to you guys before where like, I am so that person where it's like on my terms mm -hmm. and it's like, you know, that's good. Like I just, yeah. like, I just, you, I, I might want to do something super risky and daring and then I may not want to do it. And, it's and like, I'm okay with it. Yeah. And yeah. I'm okay with it. And nothing anybody else could say can influence me one right. way or the other. Yeah. And so I see that in his character. And so I don't yeah. want to push it. It's just like, yeah. oh, okay. You know, it is funny to see those yep. traits. Like my, my, my three-year-old <clears throat> has my cautious traits and my one-year-old has not does not have my car. She'll <laughs> climb anything and launch herself off on Fearless. <laughs> and my three-year-old is like, we got a big trampoline in the backyard. So we got, we, we put a big trampoline back there. It's a lot of fun. And you should see my three-year-old go in there. He climbs up, he gets on there and he just lays on it. <laughs> flat i'm like you're supposed to jump on he goes no i'll just stay like this is better <laughs> i'll just stay this like this. safe he just, <laughs> yeah, yeah you know what i bought for him that's cool that i think you would love but it's cheap it's on amazon it's like 20 something bucks maybe 30 bucks 
it's uh it's the, it's for you get a two liter bottle you empty out a two liter oh, bottle you, you fill it rocket. with water a little yeah. bit i have to look that you up you stick it on i'd show justin yeah you pump it up just a bike pump bro it goes yeah, like, yeah. it blasts off yeah, yeah. send me the link so i can look it up it bro, is I, awesome i mean is it just yeah, rocket, water ever rocket ever water dude yeah. and you pull a string and it yeah. goes he's up. really in the the one of the best purchases i've made so far with him well two two things uh i would say is the uh obviously the number blocks and then the um uh, science kit like this he's, mm. we did this we were doing the science kit again he really digs the getting mm. and doing all that stuff and mm -hmm. that'll keep him busy for hours That's awesome. speaking but, of science i have to shoe this in while i have the opportunity <laughs> <laughs> this was like another cool um experiment I, I didn't know uh anything about it um and i just uh, come across this like video and it was like part of this documentary of this like experiment where it, it's called sono luminescence so um this is where they take like a bubble and it's inside a liquid, like I guess it's water or whatever. And uh, basically you add sound waves to it, which agitates the gas inside the bubble. Uh -huh. And it, it actually like turns it into this like reaction where it, it gets a really bright blue light it actually looks like a star. It gets so bright. Wow. And it, it, it like changes from a bubble to, to this little like, um, glowing light that looks like a star. I was like, what the fuck? Can you look that up, Doug? Type it's just in. so trippy. I'm like, and then you start thinking about that, like, you know, because um, to, to have sound waves kind of create a reaction like that, you know, and if you think like on the universal scale, like in terms of how well, stars and how like everything's it, like light is a big thing, you know, like sound is all part of this. Like it says the mysteries. So they don't know how it works. They, they don't know. Yeah. Really? It's just, it's just so weird. I was like, I didn't. Did you, Sal said he brought up, and I don't remember. Yeah, see, I knew we were going to go here. I, I, Sal brought up on the show, and maybe, maybe I'm just so bad. Sometimes he brings stuff up, and I'm like, oh, whatever. It didn't yeah. sound that cool to me until I see it myself. <laughs> and hey, I saw it. I'm I know the he, same way. He don't does worry it about to it. me, too, so it's only, <laughs> it's it's right. only fair. Because uh -huh. I sent over an article. I said, bro, we got to talk about this. This is crazy. He's yeah. like, we already talked about it on the show. I'm like, what? I don't remember talking about this. And I saw that they did this study on. There's a Japanese scientist, that Doug's familiar with this. Where, and they spoke positive things into mm -hmm. water mm -hmm. and then froze it. Yeah. And then they did negative things and yeah. it made these like different crystallized way different, form. not like yeah. kind of different. No, it's like, organized and, yes. and beautiful. It's beautiful. When it's positive. And then the other ones all. So they did positive, they did words of affirmation, positive words. They did prayer. Then they did negative words, criticism, and you could clearly see the difference. So yeah, these, are all, these are all frequencies. Yeah. And this is like cymatics and stuff. This is the stuff I geek out on because I think there's like so much more to vibration, sound, and all of that. Course. That we're not we're not like investigating the full potential. Also, th that's why I thought this was so yes. and maybe I just needed the visual because you probably talked about it and I thought, oh, okay, cool. Oh no, the picture. The crystals are, are a little different. It's like Crazy different. It's very different. Yeah. No, and I mean, look, uh, uh, words are very interesting. If we didn't understand words, we wouldn't think in the yeah, same way, are. the same organized way. Look at those, look at those yeah. pictures. Yeah. Like, like imagine right now trying to think in a in for the future or to plan without words. So there's this big debate whether or not we would even have that capability hmm. until the creation of language. Mm -hmm. It was language allowed us to organize our thoughts. And to think in human, more human ways. Yeah. So yeah, all this stuff has crazy, crazy power. Yeah, yeah I, I just thought that was so weird. Yeah. It's, it's almost like, it reminds me of like the abyss or something. You know, it's like, it's alien. It's like, can you imagine seeing a little bubble and then uh, all of a sudden it just starts like glowing and it looks like this little star. Was that, what the hell? What was that movie? Wasn't that a movie? Was it called The Abyss? What was that movie? There was a movie called The Abyss. There was, right? Yeah, there was. The Abyss? Yeah, it was like an alien that was like a was. bubble. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah good stuff. I, uh, um, I've been, you know, um, on this like spiritual, you know, journey or whatever. So I'm watching people debate and discuss things and I love their discussion. I heard one of the best arguments. I, I told this to Adam today. I heard one of the best arguments I'd ever heard um, for the like, hypocrisy around yes church. dude so you ever so, hear this you ever hear people say this and we're like well yeah you know I know a lot of whatever insert right Christians who are just they're hypocrites they don't I know a guy who you know goes to church but he gambles or I know this person that whatever, wait, wait, are they human yeah. Yeah, yeah well well, so beyond that like think of this okay. imagine <laughs> walking into a gym and seeing looking around and be like look at all these hypocrites look at all these not ripped 
people. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that obese person over there right. working out. Yeah. What a hypocrite. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, oh yeah. Why that's so it's good crazy. is you're it's, working on it. Obviously. Obviously. Of course, that's why it exists. You know, you, he shared, he sal, he, sal, sal shared that this morning and I thought, oh, that is, I've never heard that. Uh, yeah. That's actually that's really a really interesting good point. And what's even, what's even more interesting to me is that how, how fucked up our society is that if you, if our audience heard us talk about people in the gym that are fat as like hypocrites, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Or talk anybody to, said that yeah, people, would, hammered. Oh, we would be totally hammered over that, but and justifiably so, but absolutely not a big deal to say somebody, a bunch of hypocrites it reminds are in me, I've seen some comments. And I don't read a lot of comments, but I've seen a few of like some criticisms and things. And we get sometimes like religious people that will like, it will bring up some topics and, They'll hammer like I, for some reason you specifically. I'm know. using like yeah. cursing, yeah. and I'm like, so you're. For me, that's always been like a bit of a wedge issue. Like it's like if you're gonna like judge so harshly on somebody in the way that they use language and like you know, um, it, in terms of like a, the reaction of it, like I can understand like situations and and but to say somebody's less holy or less like enlighten or less like pursuing like the greater good and truth because of like, you know, some, some language, the discrepancies, like you got to check yourself. It's yeah. the whole, like pull the plank out of your own eye. Right. Right. Uh, come on. We're all people. Like everybody's, I just, uh, it, that shit irritates me just because well, what irritates I, I, I'll, I'll intentionally use swear words for somebody like that to bring them back to reality. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, uh, those, I mean, I grew up around that, right? So, yeah, same with me. And when I see that, I think what's so funny is because these are also the people, too, that are that are the most, um, you know, staunch with like, okay, I'm- uh, they, they need rules. Well, they're so funny because they're, they're, they're the ones that think that they're, they're so hot, holy and they're going to, they're, they're on this mission that all they think about is bringing other people to God and, and this and that. And it's just like- you you understand that that approach uh, by doing that is like the the quickest way to turn somebody off of wanting anything to do with that. Well, is what it amounts to, to me is uh, uh, use of force versus like uh, you know uh, agreeing or presenting something that people can all kind of like um, uh, agree towards you know work towards or, versus like forcing or just being the this example how, exactly the how most do you the most powerful way and this yeah. th and this is not just attracting a, this it. is not just a religious yeah, yeah talk. bring this it to fitness a, yeah this is fitness this is your ideas with anything yeah. it could be going to a movie or dinner with your wife the most powerful way to get people to agree with you or follow you is to get them to be attracted. Yeah. Attracted to be your ideas, example. attracted to yeah. what you're doing. And nothing is more powerful than that than, than living that as an example that is so good, so shining, so cool that people go, man, what is it about you yes. that I don't have, I want, and, 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 and then inquire about it. And then you have the Listen, opportunity. I've, I've been in the fitness yeah. industry for two and a half decades. I am very convincing. I have no shortage of words. I have yet to convince a family member or friend to start working out because I just went up to them and started hammering them about it. <laughs> it never works. No. The only success I've ever had in my entire life is to be the example and then to be approached. And yeah. people come up, you know, you got so much energy or, you know, what do you think about and, this diet? And or? I'm going to add to that. Right. Also getting to a place in your journey where you're so empathetic for all, totally. of, all of their faults and failures and things like that. So imagine th these people that you're you're talking about, Justin, that are like pointing out all the flaws in it. Like, you fucking idiot. Like, yeah. that's like the worst way you could possibly do that. Right. Like, you just said a bad word. Right yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> fucking idiots. You Triggers. know what I'm saying? Like, that is not the that's way to great. do it. That's not the way to do it at all. Like, that's not yeah. going to, you being understanding and empathetic and kind and loving. It's the same thing to your point with the fitness. It's like, you, Which that's, means you well, can still be honest. It's an elitist still, attitude. That's right. You can still day. be honest. You can still be honest. Yeah. yeah I've had just, people come up to me and say, hey, man, like, why is my energy so low? And you know, I'm not feeling good. I'm like, well, I mean, you know, let's talk about your diet. And they just be honest. But and, people and, ask and they see it. Yeah. And what's way more powerful? You going like, oh man, I know. I understand what it's like to struggle with because that. Because you it's, really do. Because I, I do too. And it's yeah. it's hard for this. And like this, here's some of the things that I work on. Like that approach is so much more powerful than being like, oh, yeah. shaming you. It's probably because you're lazy. Yeah. 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 
is shaming you because you're doing that? Like, yeah, good luck getting people in shape or bringing no. people to God that way. No. Dummies. All right, I got you know, I got I got to talk about. Let's, I'm gonna take a left turn here. <laughs> you know that? Did you guys know that there we'll are? Talk about the YouTube comments, bro. I can't. Yeah, I know. I got you. You're shaming people just, for shaming. I just yeah. got off. I just I got was, off that. Thing, I don't know. Right? That one got me just because I, you know, it's it, it's just like what I grew up with. The same thing. The same kind of like yeah. just yeah. overbearing like pressure to to live under some kind of a standard. Uh, and and just pure judgment in that you know environment. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's invitation. It's, it's brutal. It's invitation. Yeah. So uh, I was reading some. Uh, we talked earlier about uh, autoimmune issues and stuff. The 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 autoimmune or immunomodulating effects of cannabinoids. It's really interesting. There's more and more studies now showing how effective cannabinoids like CBD, CBC, um, with CBG, autoimmune. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, it tamps down the the severity of the effect of autoimmune issues. Um, and it, and for people with low immune systems, it helps boost it up. So it's got this like, that's why they call it immunomodulating. It's an immunomodulating effect. So I've never taken, I've, you know, maybe I should take my Ned like that just to, like consistently, I've never consistently taken it. I can use it. You like as yeah. needed. That's kind of how hmm. I've, you I've, can also try it topically. You know that I, on yeah, your yeah. psoriasis. I've actually read that they're that it actually can work topically also on the skin. Yeah, I've used some of the creams like that, um, and all. I mean, because it's a because of it's like a, a dry skin fungus thing. Yeah. Like all oily anything Helps. fills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like coconut oil fills. Amazing. Like mm. I sometimes I'll do that. If I got nothing in the house, I'll go scoop some coconut oil and mm. rub it on there. It'll tamp down like how bad it feels. So this right? isn't related, but so. Um, Everett has he he reacts pretty strongly to poison oak, mm. and so and he'll get it every now and then. And so he was doing his sort of like meet up with the neighbor kids and got it again. And I guess I guess somebody was saying that because uh, he was using some kind of very expensive kind of uh, cream to to help uh, the, the healing process. It it was like I don't know some brand name that was like I don't know the latest like breakthrough thing. But um, I guess somebody was saying that Dawn actually is probably the most effective thing you can use. Regular dish soap, Dawn? Yeah. Really? really? Yeah. And I think the thought process is like because of, it's some kind of like pulling the oils. Because it breaks oils. the oil down? Yeah, because the oils is the problem Look that, that spreads. Up, Look up Dawn for poison. Yeah. I, 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 I want to fact check it. I, I have no idea if that's interesting. true, but I, that's what they said. I just remember the commercials with the Exxon Valdez oil spill yeah. and they were cleaning the ducks with it. Yeah, they're you know, little baby ducks. They always bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> that is the gift that keeps giving for forever, bro. Yeah, we saved ducks. We saved them. Yeah, yeah. I know. What's Interesting. It What's it say right there? Liquid dish soap or mild soap or in very warm morning water. That's, that's not. I weird. don't think it's just Dawn. I think I it's just any. I don't think Doug Google. This right. is any. this is. I think this is just like a, internet dish soap yeah. for um, poison ivy. Did I ever tell? This you? is like forum. I just lore. think uh, Dawn got lucky and had their brand Branding. associated yeah. with it. Did I ever tell you guys my uncle? My so this is my grandfather's generation uncle so he's now passed away but he when he first came to this country so back, you know when they grew up super poor so when you're in, in a, you know back in those days in sicily you work up in the hills sometimes you live up there for a few days to work and then you come back down and they don't have money for toilet paper or whatever so they would you know go to the bathroom oh, in God. the hills and they'd oh, use leaves to going. wipe themselves with. Well, anyway oh, did, I did i tell you guys this no he did this but here. i already know where it's going he used he used poison <laughs> oak to wipe his oh. Yeah, oh, dude. dude. Got poison oh. oak in his all in his butt. Really? Back. Yeah, it's true oh. story. Yeah, dude. I don't that's, know what you. How do you deal with that? You don't. That's what do you just do? You just sit miserable. in the bathtub all day. Yeah, know. actually, that's probably a hot that's bath. Probably all day. As bad as you can get yeah, all day. Like, but it's supposed to be like an oatmeal bath. Is what you're supposed to take. Actual oatmeal? Yeah, I think oatmeal. Try that one. Okay, <laughs> now I've never had. Okay, now this we is like a would you rather with, kind of question, right? So, yeah. would you rather have that like and wipe with that or uh, like Tiger Bomb? You know, or like something where it's like, oh yeah, my God. you know, like, you oh, know. Tiger Bomb for sure, Justin, because that's that, over and done with. The well, po let's say oak. it lasts as long. Oh, well, then yeah. that'd be different. Isn't, that, a, <laughs> isn't that like a prank? Well, because that that's like one of those, if you don't wash your hands good enough, like it. Uh, you know, the worst about that stuff is like you do some of that and you actually rub your eye or something like that. Oh. What, so what's that? That was a prank, right? You put yes, your buddy's yes. jocks around? We used to do it to my sister's friends in their, in their bra and panties. No, and you didn't, <laughs> Yes, we used to do that. Yeah, yeah. What, so would they just start screaming? Yeah, no, I got big trouble for that. Oh, wow, Yeah, my, when my sister's yeah, friends would I'd rather the burn than the itch, I guess is my point. Yeah. Oh, man, that would, the itch would be awful. Dude. Butthole and uh, oh. that long. Oh, oh that's oh, I would. That's, that's what I do. I just sit in the bath. Yeah, 
Just sit in a bath all the time. Just running like water. Yeah, I just bath, bath <laughs> yeah. all the time. So the way those things work, by the way, same See, thing with like spicy. Same thing with spicy foods. It tricks the senses. This the what are they called? The the taste buds or sensors to, to that it's pain. It's not actually pain, but you you feel it as pain. Yeah, and you can't. There's nothing you can do about it. Oh my mm. god! You see those videos of the people eating those like super hot chips. Uh huh. And they're like, there's a couple kids that had to go to the hospital over it. That's how bad. Isn't it that was. what the, the what, isn't that the latest TikTok thing? Right? Is the chip thing? I don't know if it's the latest. Were they like dipped in ghost reapers or something? You buy one. You buy Have one you chip. These? There's a gas, they're like chip. a gas station chip, right? Isn't that what it's called? I don't know, but it comes in a box and it's one chip. We got Dylan here. He should know. And Dylan, are you, do you know anything about this? Yeah, I think you guys have talked about it before. It's like the death chip or something. Yes, yes. It's like the death chip. That's so what, yeah, but, it's but the one it's, chip challenge, they call it. Yeah. There what kind pa of pepper Pocky. is in it? Pocky. Uh, let me see here. What's, the late, what's going on on TikTok lately, Doug? <laughs> I have zero idea. Okay, <laughs> he's working on his latest like routine. Yeah, I got my dance going on here. <laughs> Good deal. Like, oh, All dude, right. we, have a, <laughs> we have a shout right? out today. Is it the chip? Oh no, yeah. actually, let's the shout chip. out. Yeah, it's, uh, by the way, it's a Carolina Reaper chip. I knew yeah, it. It yeah, was yeah, some okay. kind of Reaper. Yeah. Let's shout out the conversation that Justin just sent oh, over I loved it. because uh, I, my oldest yeah. sent that to I'm me too. I'm sucked into that, and I yes. haven't. Even, so that's, it's Jordan Peterson, and he interviewed Destiny. Uh, Destiny was the gamer. It's his gamer it's name. Game gamer handle. Yeah. Oh, that guy's a gamer. He's so a streamer. He's a yeah. streamer, and, he, and then he be, and then he started doing political commentary. Got really popular. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, he's a really smart, smart guy. guy. Yeah, no, he's, he's a smart, very smart kid. He can articulate it's, his points. He's really like thirty five. Well. It's a really good um, but, debate. It gets heated, but yes. they're, they're respectful. Yeah, and they both make pretty good points. It's yeah. Good. I mean, I've only seen like maybe 15 minutes of it, and I was pulled in. I was like, oh, I got to yeah. watch this mm -hmm. later on. This is going to be good a really good. Debate. I love. I love. You know, and I know obviously you, it's so weird. You bring up Jordan Peterson's name and it's like this massive, uh, you know, triggering for some people, but it's like, man, a conversation like that. I mean, that's what it's all about right there, dude. Yeah. Having, bringing somebody in who you, you disagree on getting after it, but respecting each other. Yeah. There were no personal attacks. Well, now if you don't like Jordan Peterson, you'll like this interview. Cause I feel like it's probably the best argument in opposition. There's another guy that I, I told you guys that I went down, I looked up that were, people were claiming like he got Jordan got eviscerated, which was not true, but it was a good argument. And it was a, a, an atheist that uh, argued with him. I think he did better than Sam Harris did with him. Mm. And they, they went around and around. It was pretty good actually. Okay. Um, but yeah, I've, I've heard a couple of his that are like that, that are just, I mean, those are great, great conversations. It's, yeah, Jordan Peterson, Destiny interview. Element T is an electrolyte powder with the right amount of sodium to power you through your workouts, to give you better muscle contractions and better recovery. By the way, no sugar and no artificial sweeteners. It tastes great. And again, it's the electrolytes your body needs. Go check them out. Go to drinklmnt.com forward slash mind pump. And through that link, they will offer you a free sample pack with any order. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Nick from Massachusetts. Whoa, that room looks cool. You look like you're inside of a crystal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How you doing, Nick? How can we help you? Good. How are you? Good. Uh, first off, I want to say thank you for uh, you know everything you guys do. Uh, you've helped me both personally and even in my fitness career as a, a trainer. Definitely <clears throat> uh, huge help from you guys out of that one. Yeah. Well, how, how can we help you? Yeah. So, um, let me preface with a little bit of a, you know, backstory, kind of get into my question from there. So I'm 37 now, uh, when I was 30, I suffered a stroke from migraines. Um, but in short, like after a bunch of testing and everything like that, the doctors pretty much said I had a stroke without actually having a stroke. Um, like I had no typical signals in the testing. There was no, uh, blood claw, all the scans came up fine, no burst, no hemorrhage, you know, anything typical never showed up in any, any of the science. It actually took them like 24 hours to find it. Um, so altogether, four areas on my brain were affected, the biggest part being my motor coordination. Um, and up until that point, I had been lifting since I was about 20, so almost 10 years then. I had been an athlete my whole life, you know, very active, very healthy, uh, you know, nothing typical that would set it off. And, uh, it was kind of just a freak thing. And uh, at the time, my right side completely went numb. And basically, my left side um, should have been numb because everything they said is it's opposite brain. So it was kind of an anomaly, too, because the right side that was affected, my left side should have been numb, but my right side was numb. So super, super weird case. Uh, so fast forward to today, pretty much um, pretty good now, like very slight issues on the right side of my body here and there as far as like balance and things go i went through pt and recovery from there for about seven weeks to just basically stand up straight again and walk straight again 
Um, but after about a year and a half of recovery, I got back into lifting, eased my way into it and, you know, got back up to it. But uh, fast forward to today, what my question basically is, I notice my CNS, everything just doesn't fire properly. Um, I notice that my right side overcompensates for everything, push exercises like presses, uh, triceps, my back always wants to kick in, you know, my back's super tight. It's always trying to overcompensate like I said for everything. And it's super frustrating for me, especially being a trainer. I know you know, I feel like I know what I'm doing. I, I have a lot of experience there and I try to treat myself almost as a client. You know what I mean? Like how I would treat a client and cue them up and do the same thing with me. And nothing seems to stick with me. I can't connect to the muscle the way I should. So I wanted to hmm. ask you guys. Huh. From a from a training standpoint, I mean, you've been working out now for a while since you had the stroke, right? This was back when you were 30 or 37 now, you said? Yeah. So I've been working out again, a consistent, just about almost five years now, yeah. four and a half, five years. There's going to be some limiting factors that exercise won't be able to solve. However, I think exercise has done a significant uh, amount in terms of benefit. And I think you can continue to improve, but if there is a limitation due to CNS damage or damage to a part of the brain, um, then there's... The, you. At this point, there's only so far you can go so without would, maybe talking to or so working with someone. What about exploring like peptides and stuff or something like this? You, you know, it depends how 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 badly the damage is there. I would say, um, I yeah, I don't know. How, I wouldn't know how to comment on something like this. Um, you know, I've worked with clients with nerve damage, and we can get pretty far, but there's certain things that just won't regenerate, and so you're working at that point with compensations. I think unilateral training is where I would live. Yeah, if I symmetry were you. is the yeah. program that I would do. I, I would always do unilateral training because you're going to be more apt to develop imbalances uh, or to strengthen imbalances with a barbell than you are with you know one side at a time type of training. Did the doctor say anything about like managing your intensity as you went back into lift weights or anything? No, so I mean they said pretty much just you know they kind of trusted me in a sense and just said you can do what you do, just kind of ease up into it, don't go you know crazy like that. Um, so I know what I've tried unilateral, you know I do actually like half my routine right now is a lot of unilateral stuff, and I still notice the same thing where it helps, but it's the same thing where my left side just doesn't want to develop like my right side does. Mm. Um, I mean I notice it, you know obviously I'm nitpicky, but like I notice bicep, tricep, legs, everything on my left side is definitely less strength wise, yeah. size wise than my right. Yeah. Yeah. I think there, there's uh, elements of the body that don't regenerate and central nervous system and nerve type stuff is, is, you know, falls under that category. Um, but I definitely wouldn't stop and I would focus on unilateral training hundred percent prevent. Half. I wouldn't do half. I do hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. And, always. Yeah. And, and always, yeah. and, and what will be challenging because you, because to you, you notice a significant difference from left to right. Uh, is the the desire to want to keep pushing the the stronger side? It's like you got to just you got to mirror what you can do on the weaker side if you want. If we're gonna chase symmetry, right? If we're gonna try and balance the body out as much as possible, you know, if you can only leg press x amount of weight on the left side, you got to do that on the right side and just mirror it and and not and resist the temptation to want to push more with the with the more dominant yeah. side. Is is uh, the other you know another thing you can add? And I don't know how much of a difference this will make. But it, throughout the day is to try to use the side that's uh, been affected more than the dominant side. Yeah, so frequency. balance on that foot more often, use that hand more often, and just anytime you do something, use that side because that'll continue to send a, a consistent signal to the body. And there may be some compensations that can happen. You know, the brain's got some plasticity, so there may be some compensations that can, can still happen. But I would do a lot of frequency in the sense of just living my life. I would aim to use that side more or as much as possible. Yeah. Even like doing like isometric stuff on that side, I, would, I think it would be great yeah. for him, you know? So focusing on things like that. Are you, do you have our symmetry program? Um, I don't. I usually just do a lot of my own stuff that makes sense. I can try it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah think, we think you'll like it. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's send that over to you and, and literally lay it, follow it the way it's laid out too, because I yep. think that I, I think you'll benefit from the isometrics at the beginning too. Awesome. I appreciate it. Yeah. That's the thing. I definitely don't, you know, I definitely don't go 50%. I mean, every day, a couple of days I have like some shitty days, but pretty much I, I'll try to go hundred percent. And uh, one thing I learned from you guys a while ago was not overdoing it on one side than the other, you know, I yeah. like, on single side, I'll do that side first wherever I fail, whatever, and then I just match it. Okay, good. Yep, good. yep. Okay, perfect. No, yeah, good. You're on dude. point, dude. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I would just guess time and volume. Yeah. And I would guess because of your training and your experience and consistency, 
you're a lot farther than you than you would have been without those things. Um, oh, so, 100 percent. Yeah. So kudos to you for that. Yeah, I appreciate that. If I can uh, follow up real quick, if you don't mind with something, sure. sure. So the other part of that is I notice uh, the migraines got way better since you know that kind of happened. They kind of went away for the most part. I get them here and there. Certain workouts definitely trigger that, and mm -hmm. I didn't know if there's a way around it, or again, kind of maybe avoid it altogether. So like shrugs, um, barbell deadlifts, and barbell back squats are the three main ones where I basically eliminated mm -hmm. them from my workout because it's an instant migraine. Mm -hmm. Nick, this is all central nervous yeah. system connected. It sounds like so. Those exercises can cause a temporary, more so than other ones, a temporary rise in blood pressure and then a blood pressure drop yeah. when you put the weight up. And it, it's probably when the set is over that the migraine starts to kick in. Um, or there could be something mm. in the cervical area of your spine that could be triggering because you just mentioned a bunch of exercises that tend to stress that area a lot. Deadlift, shrugs for sure, and barbell squats for sure. Have you had an MRI done on, on your cervical spine? Uh, we did a, like two years ago, I had one, everything was like pretty much normal. I, I know I forgot exactly. Like a couple things were a little, you know, closer than they should be, but they said nothing significant or nothing okay. to really worry about. Yeah. Central nervous system is where I would look. And, uh, you know, you've probably done everything that Western medicine can do for that. Yeah. I would look, uh, towards Ayurvedic medicine or Chinese medicine, um, to see if there's any, anything that they can offer that can help your CNS uh, become a little more balanced because that that's what's triggering the migraine is uh, yeah and the, and the central nervous system controls your blood pressure up or down um, so and I've had that with clients where they'll do a set put the weight down either get dizzy or get a migraine right afterwards sometimes both <laughs> yes yeah so it's like your blood pressure goes up and then you get this dramatic drop dramatic crash yeah more so than you should mm -hmm. when you stop the set one thing you can try is when you rack the weight. Tense your legs and keep them tense for about 10 to 15 seconds. That'll help keep the blood pressure up and then slowly release the tension out of your legs. Don't let the blood pressure drop all at once. Yeah. See if that helps. Oh. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I've tried to talk to a lot of people. That's why I was glad to get on here because I've tried to pick other trainers' brains. I've done a lot of research and it's yeah. kind of just standard, like, you know, take it easy or do this. It's also, <laughs> yeah. it's also something that typically someone twice my age deals with. So, <laughs> yeah, no, no, I understand. Yeah. No, thanks for calling awesome. in, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. Can I one one quick follow-up, if you don't mind? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nick. So to go with everything like that real quick, um, I do a lot of mobility, a lot of stretching, but I notice along with everything else, my muscles are tight no matter what I try. I mean, I have mobility days. I, I prime them before the workouts no matter what. I, and I know that's affecting things too, which again, is probably a CNS thing. It is. Wow. 100%. Yeah, <laughs> this is all pointing to that. Yeah, you know, it is. Time. Uh, static stretching might be something that's really good for you. Do yeah. you have a, 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 like high heart rate, blood pressure? How's all that for you, by the way? Literally everything's like perfect. Everything's okay. normal. Everything's good. You, you know, I try stretching mobility, all of that. It, it's quick relief, obviously, but then, you know, workouts, everything, it's super tight. I think static stretching would be good for you. Not before your workout, but at, you know, at the yeah. end of the day at night or static stretching in heat with a sauna. That gets the CNS yeah. to chill out or or, or to, to kind of balance out a little bit. Okay. Yeah. But I'll definitely try that. CNS stuff. Yeah. Before, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yep. That's what I figured. I just, you know, go to the experts. <laughs> no, you're, you're on the right, you're on the right track. But I, you know, I feel like too, I, I wouldn't stop searching. I no, mean, no, I, mean, I would yeah. not. I wouldn't stop searching because it's, it's just, it sounds like it's just something that's Have you really... had your adrenals looked at? Any, anything? Uh, your... No. Like you know, normal blood work. Yeah, but oh, there's, there's something going on with your CNS. Uh, so you might want to even go to a specialist. They do these whole body scans. Now, I don't know where you're at, but over here in San Jose, I don't know how much it costs. So like two grand or three grand. Oh, right. But they do this whole MRI. body scan of yeah. the whole body. Um, they look at everything. Um, and then, you know, they can kind of look at that and look for certain things. But I, I wouldn't stop looking. There's there's something that has not been found Yeah, is what it, yeah. what it sounds like. That's what it feels like. I mean, I've over the years, seven years now, I've had eight different neurologists. Uh, you know, I Google everything online. Yeah, I try to yeah. talk to everybody. There's nothing. <laughs> uh, maybe when yeah, we, we maybe we can connect him with the guy that we know. I don't know if I can mention Dr. I say Dr. Khan. Maybe we can connect him with Dr. Yeah, Khan to see if he can help. That's him. a good yeah. call. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we'll, we'll send you some information for uh, somebody that we know that works really well, but you, you'd have to fly out awesome. of the country. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Leave an email to start. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. All right, Nick. Awesome. Thanks, Nick. I, Thank you guys. You got it. That sucks. Definitely a, you know, um, 
Yeah. It sounds like it's just like a some sort of a rare condition with the CNS that they, like a normal doctor is just not going to pick up on. Because everything he said was it's like definitely elusive. Yeah, back to that. Yeah. The, and the, the, now the damage he got from the stroke, I mean, some damage you get, uh, you just can't. You yeah, can't fully get come back. Regenerate, and easy. when it comes to, to to peptides, I don't know if they would even help this far out. Yeah. Right afterwards, there could be some benefit. Like right afterwards, there there might have been benefit from doing a peptide that helps accelerate healing. And, and I mean, Doctor like Connell would be a good person to talk to. Yes, because he's cutting edge. He's way yeah. beyond what you're going to be doing with any. Yeah, other. That's what he needs to look into. Yeah. Somebody who's revolutionary in this. And he's dealing with a lot of like young athletes that are pushing their bodies to extreme limits and have weird shit going right. on when they get hit and that's hurt. Right. So I mean, he's probably the best. I'll be with him tomorrow, so I'll talk to him and see see what's up. And then uh, Doug, you'll have to probably reach out to Katrina to get the email information for him to email in or whatever. Yep. She can actually email personally and see if we can get him. At least uh, to talk connect, to him. Yeah. At least connected to his team and see what, see if he can troubleshoot more. Our next caller is Oleg from Lithuania. What's happening, Oleg? Hey, what's up guys? How can we help? Yeah, I'm really that I'm here. Uh, yeah. There are so many people who, told you so many good words and I will not repeat that, but I can tell you that I'm truly amazed about one thing. There are three of you guys. You're doing that almost every day. And we know, at least I know that, you know, how difficult the relationship, the relationships between people are and you look at professional and fun every single day. So thank you for that. Huge awesome. respect for that. It's a lot. It's really hard to deal with Adam yeah. for all of us. We, we work hard. A lot of smoke and mirrors. Yeah. You have no idea how much shit we put up with Sal. <laughs> no, no, hey, I said it first. How can we help you, man? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right. So um, I'll try to go through my mail and then I will add just one twist to my question, which I totally forgot when I was asking it. So I'm uh, 42 years old. I'm six foot, I'm six foot and I'm 160 pounds guy. Uh, my main hobby and my passion is windsurfing. I'm competing at a national level, uh, but I'm not a pro. And weight matters a lot in my sport. So I compete mainly against 200 pounds or 210 pounds guys, and they go way faster. And of course, for some time, I've tried to gain weight. And uh, basically, I was a bit more systematic with my training for the past two and a half years. And I've been doing a weird stuff. I've been basically doing three exercises all two and a half years. I've been doing squats, bench press, and weighted pull-ups. And each week I've been adding, basically, I've been doing five sets of each. And I, each week I've been basically adding one rep, which is around 3% of my total volume. So to have that overload. And then when I was hitting like uh, five sets, 12 reps, then I was just bumping up the weight. I managed to go uh, from 100 pounds to 155 pounds in squats and bench press. I wanted to go from no added weight pull-ups to 33 uh, pounds uh, additional weight pull-ups. And the, most of the days I actually hit my protein targets. I, I use shakes at least once a day, uh, but not, not all the time. <clears throat> uh, and then uh, I was never, I was almost all the time in the, in, in the maintenance mode. And uh, for the past few months, I went in a moderate bulk and I gained some weight. And of course, I, I got some actually, unfortunately, some belly fat as well together with it. However, my question is, I guess, is not exactly about how to add weight, but is actually how to approach the training. And as a windsurfer, I have two seasons. I have on season, which is more or less April till November, and I have off season, which is November till March. And during the season, I cannot plan very much because windsurfing, it's, it's a wind thing. So if, it's, if it blows like three or four days a week, then I'm, I'm, I'm once in a time I'm in a gym, I'm doing that at home. And then if it's, uh, and then if it, uh, and then during winter, I'm, uh, I'm more systematic with my approach. And I recently purchased this uh, MAPS 40. And the only thing that I actually picked up from MAPS 40 was the checklist. So uh, going to bed, drinking water, no electronics and yada, yada. But I did not switch to the training per se. And the main problem is mental because I was going for the same exercises for two and a half years. I saw progress. I never had any traumas. And I'm so afraid now to go with something else. Because, uh, I mean, then maybe I will not be gaining any strength or 
Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I've heard a lot from you guys about novelty. So, yeah, Oleg, real quick, I got to say something. The workout you were doing, the, the squats, way. bench, pull ups, add one rep I love a that. week. And, and then when you get to 12, add some weight is better than 90% of the workouts that know, yeah. people sell the online. The simplicity of that. It's very simple, very basic. Yeah. Uh, Such a great methodical approach. The way to, you added volume. Increase volume. Incredible. Yeah. Now, you're totally ready for MAPS 40 plus. You're ready for a new program. And you're going to see more muscle gains from a new program, especially because you're adding new exercises to your programming. I mean, it's, you're going to get great benefits from it, especially after what you've been doing. Yeah. I'm, I'm still so fascinated that... Uh, in windsurfing, it's better to be heavier. Yeah, what's I, the, I, that, that, is I, that so that the the sail doesn't pick you up and you stay more on the water? Why is it better to be heavier? That's, that's it, so counterintuitive. It's a lot about physics. The bigger guys, they have more momentum. They can have the bigger sails. It's mm -hmm. it's it, it just to go faster. In others, if you if you want to do jumps and fix, then you better be light and okay. flexible and everything. Uh, but in in a speed runs, they, they need to be quite. Okay. That is fast. Okay, that makes more sense yeah. then. Yeah. Okay. Well, and, I mean, yeah, you follow MAPS 40, plus you go in a, a calorie surplus, a nice small surplus, you'll gain some muscle for sure. Yeah. And you and you you even uh, you even touched on how to how to train, right? So that's what you would follow that to a T in the off season. On season you do one day a week like you were doing. You you have the uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. So off season. Right. So I'm keeping on season the same 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 routine, yes. and then off season I go maps forty basically. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. What you were doing naturally is, I mean, you actually did a really good job with what you what you've done so far. I think the way you were programming for yourself is is great, and exactly how we would program an athlete in season. I don't want you in the gym lifting traditional weightlifting more than one day a week. That's plenty. So yeah. in other words, you can start maps forty off season or on season, but on season you do it once a week. On season you follow the program as it's laid out. But I mean, if I do maps forty on season once a week, isn't that like like just you know I'm doing just part of the program, then losing so much? Maybe then I just need to stay. No, uh, you're, as no, you're fine because no. you're full body workouts. Yeah. yeah, no, you're fine with that. Program, uh -huh. Yeah, with that program, you're fine. Yeah, you yeah. could pick one of the workouts uh -huh. and you're okay. Yeah, yeah. Like if you were doing our uh, split program, that wouldn't be an ideal way to do that. No, but be but because the maps forty is based off of a full body routine. You just pick the full one of the days and you can follow it, and that would be sufficient for sure. Yeah, the only other option, like it would be like a mass fifteen, where you're kind of spreading out that volume throughout the week, and you're just doing really like short workouts uh, to combo with you know your practicing, but just once a week of a full workout routine is going to cover that. Yep. And the reason why I like the actually once a week versus because I I like mass fifteen a lot because I, if I understood you correctly. Uh, the days that you wind surf could are in are inconsistent because it's based off the wind, right? So if it's like you get yeah. three, four windy days in a row, you're doing it. Yeah. If you have one day and then four yeah. days, so having a routine where you have to come to the gym consistently throughout the week is probably less advantageous. A, a program where you can just do it one day a week, any yeah. day that yeah. you yeah. get free that, that is suits I, it better. So I, I mean, I like you following Maps Forty year round. You fall, you run. The in season, you just do one one day a week of one of the one of the full body workouts, and then when you're in the off season, yeah, follow it to a T, bump your calories a little bit, and uh, let it go. Damn, that was too easy. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> you're, well, you're doing good already, bro. I think yeah. I think you did a hell of a job on your own, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, thank you guys. Yeah, thank you. So then I guess I'll just uh, stick to that. But then once I'm that uh, I understand every like three months I need to switch a program. So basically next time, but since I'm my off season is like five months. So then basically I'm good and I'm just uh, running maps for it. Then I'm going to you're totally, my regular. Yep. Yeah. You're yeah. totally fine. The other program in off season would be like a maps performance or anabolic would even be appropriate, but you're fine. Mm -hmm. But get good at 40 for now. You yeah. can run that a few times back to back to back in the before we mess with anything. In fact, I would try and squeeze everything I could out of if you're seeing which you will, if you follow it to a T in the offseason, you're gonna see some good gains from it. I'd I'd keep running it until you start to see yourself stall in the gym and then we could then we could uh, interrupt that with another program. Well, all right. Right on man. Thank you guys. Yeah, hey, you got it, man. Yeah, keep us posted. <laughs> Thank I'd, you so much. I'd, I'd yeah. love to hear how it goes, man. Follow back up with us. Thank you. All right, I'll 
How f- how funny is that? That's cool. That, that some dude, not even a trainer, right? No. Comes up with the program, <laughs> and the way he explained it and does it is better. better literally, than any fitness influencer. L- literally I better think. than ninety yeah. percent of the workouts that fitness influencers should have asked him what he did for work. I'm always intrigued by someone who has like a, a, a like, yeah a brain like that. Yeah, 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 probably engineer or something yeah, like that be to be that guy. Yeah, that methodical. I mean, it's perfect. Literally one rep a week. He, pro- he could have done more. Whatever. Nope, just one rep. Yeah. Added weight when he gets to twelve. Like, what a great approach. Well, systematic. And the three extra he picked were pretty good. Yeah, good I mean, those are, that's not a bad combination of yeah. exercises. No, you're gonna get plenty of great ga- full body gains from all those. Totally. I, lo- I love that. Our next caller is Gabby from Nevada. Hi, Gabby. How can we help? Hi, you? guys. How you doing? Hello. Um, this is really exciting and slightly intimidating, but um, first, thank you guys so much. I've learned so much, not just about fitness and health, but just everything, even you guys talking about your kids. I don't have kids, but I still enjoy even stuff like that. So thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. Great. Um, so first to start off, I started a bulk in September. Um, I prob- I wouldn't say I started gaining weight until probably around December. And I started at um, 127 pounds. And then um, through that, I gained around, I would say, and I went up to 137. um, Or no, sorry, not 137, 133. um, And then I get these body scans done. And I've done three from October to the end of February. And after that, I kind of noticed that I had only gained one pound, 1.3, I think to be exact pounds of muscle and then five pounds of body fat, which was really discouraging. Obviously I did something wrong. I felt like I was doing everything right. I felt stronger. Um, I track my calories pretty accurately, I would say. I only go out to eat probably like three times a month. So I'm just kind of confused on where I went wrong, I guess. How much stronger did you get? Do you, can you give me some like ideas of weights, uh, that you, you know, that you could do for a certain lift and what it went to? Um, so I would say probably an average of all my lifts I gained around, or I went up 10 pounds and everything. Um, so squat, I started at like 150 and then I went to 165 bench I started at 100 and I got 110 um I don't deadlift very consistently um but everything else like split squats I went up okay. and weighed a lot like everything I felt I feel like I got what, stronger uh where's the programming coming from Where, what are you following um I just kind of make my own stuff um I do a body part split um And then with one full body day. So I usually do about five to six days of training a week, but I, there you go. Yeah. We're going to get you. That's it. We're the the program. I can see the program. Yeah. yeah. That's the problem. That's way too much. I just, um, bought anabolic advanced. Too much. Too much. Okay. Anabolic advanced is great, but I want you to go to maps anabolic. We'll get there. We'll send you that. Let's start with anabolic maps anabolic. Do the three day a week version on there. Do the trigger sessions on the off days. Make the trigger sessions easy. Okay, I'm going to say this again because I know what you're going to do. I can already tell you're going to overdo the trigger sessions. Make the trigger sessions just, you just want to feel the muscle. It's not a workout. But then you get three workouts a week. That program will take care of. By the way, that's not terrible what you did. You gained a pound, a little over a pound and a half of muscle, gained some body fat. But the problem was you weren't, the, the muscle building signal wasn't effective enough. And that doesn't mean you didn't train hard enough. It just means it wasn't appropriate. And I guess that you worked out too much. Yeah. Five or six days a week uh, is just too much to build muscle for most people. People that train like that and build muscle on that are really advanced, genetically gifted, oftentimes on on hormones. So I maps anabolic, follow it to a T, and you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna see your strength gains go up like crazy. Are you uh, are you good about hitting uh Gabby, are you good about consistently hitting your protein and tank too? Yeah, I get I probably get around 140 grams of protein a day. Okay, so good. you're good. Okay, good. Yeah. If you're doing that, you're, it's just programming. I mean, yeah. this okay. is, an, you're an example of the, how this makes a difference. Uh, this yeah. will make a big difference for you. I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to have team. Doug put you in the private forum also, because I'd like to uh, keep an eye on you as you go through this and then just every, every month check in with us. So as, okay. you're, as you're going through the process, 
Um, just keep it, keep us posted on, on how you're feeling, what's going on, especially with like strength and stuff like that. That's oh, what yeah. we, that's what we should we should notice. Like, I think you you'll get even more. By strength the way, you, you I mean you, your calories, you got yourself up to uh, twenty seven hundred calories at one hundred and thirty something pounds. Not bad. Yeah, yeah. You, you and you, it's not like you gained. A, I mean, you're not. You're you're still lean. So you're 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 everything's like the one missing piece of the puzzle is the programming, and that's why I feel so confident. That when you follow maps anabolic, you're gonna it's gonna blow your mind on how your body responds in comparison to how it has been. And I'd probably okay. I'd probably now that you got all the way up to twenty seven and fifty, which is really good, I'd probably hover somewhere around twenty five hundred calories and just follow sure. the programming. Yeah, so, follow maps anabolic. So you're not really okay. in a major deficit. If you are, it's a slight. Maybe some days you're in a surplus. It's gonna bounce and just follow the programming and let the program do the work. And we should see yourself. Just lean yeah. out, lean out nicely, and maybe if we're lucky, build a little bit of muscle at the same time. Yeah. How, were you doing strength training before all of this, or was that new to you? Yeah, I've been lifting for about I would say three and a half, maybe four years. Awesome, awesome. You're gonna, yeah. you're gonna um, love Maps Anabolic. Okay, perfect. Kevin. And so I am down to twenty two hundred calories right now, and my plan uh, was just keep going down and no, like go into no, a no, no, no. I want you around twenty five. Say okay. then, since you told me that you're at 22, then maybe hover around 2350 to to 2500. 2500. Don't go higher. lower than 2350. Yeah, uh, yeah. You stay up, stay up. You're gonna be okay. Okay. Yeah, because we gotta feed. We gotta feed yeah. the game. No, we have that's to a, feed the muscle. Yeah. That's okay. I'm, that's why I want you in the forum because I actually want to hear. I want to hear because I I might put you even higher after a month. So let me, I want to hear how you're doing. So stick to a number. Just be consistent with it. Check in with me in the forum and let me know. Hey, Adam, this is where. And guys, I've been eating this many calories. This is what I see strength wise. This is what I see weight wise. Just tell us what you see, and then we yeah. can adjust. For Have that. you lost any weight at twenty two <coughs> at twenty two hundred calories since you've been there? Um, yeah, I've lost two pounds. Yeah, you know what? Let's get you. Let's keep you around twenty. Yeah, don't go. I mean, I would even go twenty four. I mean, twenty five was the number. Yeah, twenty five. That's the number I felt good about. Because we got to so. give. We got to. Okay. We got to make sure we fuel the muscle that you're going to get from Maps Anabolic. Yeah. And then again, just like I said, stay in, keep in touch with us, and then we'll we'll coach you through the process to, uh, to make sure we're right there. But I think you're going to see some great results from this. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, you got it. All right, Gabby. No problem. Right. That's it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, we'll see you in the forum. Sounds good. Bye. Bye. Is going to blow her mind? Yeah, yeah, she's going to yeah. be great. She was working out five, six days a week, some full body with body parts split in there. I mean, okay, so you, yeah. we, I think we should explain Lots what happens, work. right? You're in a surplus, so your body's eating calories, so it's going to put weight on, right? She's That's lifting just, weights. Mm -hmm. and she's. But what's happening is you're getting stuck in that recovery trap. This, you're, she's, it's, yep. The body's not fully recovering. She's just hammering it you're again. Not adapting at that point. And so she's not building more muscle, and she's putting on a little bit of weight. And she didn't do bad. It's just, uh, just not the... It's not, what, what do you say all the time that I like that you say, which is the, it's like the difference between uh, optimal versus uh, what you can handle. Yes. You know, so in her eyes, I, she can easily handle five days a week of training, yeah. but it's not. But that's not optimal. optimal. Right. Yeah. No. And, and the programming, who knows what the pro, see, there's so much that goes to the programming that people don't understand. It's not just, am I recovering enough? Am I doing the right exercises? Exercise yeah. order, reps, sets, tempo, like, and when you and then how you piece it leaving together. it to how you feel, you can trick yourself really totally. easily based off of that day. So, totally. yeah, phone. I love that we help. had an easy answer for her because <laughs> that's, that's it. It's going to fix it's gonna make everything. a big difference. Our next caller is Tae Woo from California. What's up, Tae Woo? How can we help you? Hey, hey, hey. Uh, I'm at my gym, and so there might be some noise here and there. So, I apologize in advance. No worries. There is a fire truck going. Uh, hey, guys, I'm from uh, San Francisco. Neighbors, hey. um, I'll just read my question out loud and then uh, go from there. All right, let's hear it. So, cool. I'm a personal trainer in San Francisco, and yes, I am in the Elite Trainer Academy course. Uh, I have been working out for 15 plus years now and have been able to expose my fitness levels to numerous modalities. Right now, Olympic lifting, powerlifting, kettlebell training, and animal flow are my routines, but I also recently introduced landmine training and have been loving it. I can confidently say that these modalities will be a part of my routine for a big chunk of my career or training, if not forever, especially with animal flow. I'm recently coming back from a low back injury that caused a minor bulging disc and some sciatica down uh, my left glute and hamstring. It's getting better now. Uh, this injury caused me to pause and think about the longevity of my fitness career and how I want to uh, model my programming moving forward to lift heavy, but also still not get injured. Uh, I, I still love lifting heavy, so like Olympic lifting, powerlifting, kettlebells, line line, all of that stuff. But I also love to do animal flow and move like a ninja. 
My current routine is uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, full body workouts, and Tuesday, Thursday. Sometimes Saturdays are my animal flow and mobility training. My question here is on the Monday, Wednesday, Friday workouts, how, how can I properly program the other modalities of training without overtraining? How would I know how much volume to do to make sure that my body doesn't feel stiff and tight? So, for example, you guys on your program, you do month to month phasing. Um, do I do Olympic lifting for a month, kettlebell training for a month? I also like the idea of incorporating all those in a month and then kind of going from there. So just kind of needing your guidance on mm. that. Mm. How, how long have you been a trainer? Trainer 10 plus years now. Oh, good. Okay. The reason why I asked that is because when you're combining different modalities, so when you look at a modality of training like powerlifting or Olympic lifting or kettlebell training, and then you find time-tested workout programs like West Side Barbells training or whatever, they're very well made. They're time-tested. They're good. What happens sometimes is when we mix modalities, we don't consider the combinations of certain exercises and how they'll feel, and, and they're just not time-tested. And it's hard to, to kind of gauge those things. But with your experience, you're probably going to do an okay job. You'll probably know I probably shouldn't kettlebell swing on this day because I'm doing this lift and the day after I'm doing that type of deal. So that probably won't be an issue with someone with your experience. The, the main thing is going to be adjusting the intensity uh, of your workouts and changing the exercises when you start to notice overuse patterns or issues if you start to move in the same plane all the time. So if you start to notice lateral stability issues or rotational stability or strength, then I would incorporate those. But it's a lot of it's going to be around uh, monitoring and managing the intensity of your of your workouts. And that's going to be, you know, lifestyle. Like, you know, sometimes you can work out harder. Sometimes you work out not so hard. How do you feel? How's your body feel? Are you progressing, regressing? Are you noticing more injuries? You know, what kind of sleep are you getting? So the intensity is going to be the most important thing to manage for longevity. That's true, but you're also talking about, he's talking about quite a few modalities thrown at, at one yeah, time. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm trying to wrap so my brain around I, I know, I'm looking, to start. I'm, I'm looking at it right now. Obviously, animal flow is easiest, yeah. right? Because that's like a mobility it's practice a recovery, that, yeah. that can, can pair, it pairs well with everything. And, and I love the idea of that is a way to mitigate like, you know, a little bit of overreaching or an off day or in between workouts, right? So that's easy. Animal flow is easy. But I'm looking at landmine, kettlebells, powerlifting, and Olympic lifting, and it's just a lot to slam into a week. So it's like I'm 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 not going to train all those in a in a week. I'm going to probably focus more on these like like meso cycles that would be like I don't know four to six weeks long of Olympic lifting, and then it would go to like kettlebells, and then it would go to powerlifting. That's typically how I would want to do something, like, and not only just because I think that. Programming wise, it's going to benefit you, uh, but it's. I think it's also going to be easier to see actual real improvements in those things. Like, obviously, you know the the tech, how technical Olympic lifting is. Like, I wouldn't want to like just get in the groove and then all of a sudden I'm switching out uh, to a different complete modality. So, yeah. um, have you gone through our Maps Performance Program? Yeah, I have. Um, so I haven't gone looked at the advanced Maps Performance Advanced version, uh -huh. but. Um, going back to what Adam, what you were saying, um, cause this is what I was thinking too, of like, let's say Olympic lifting and powerlifting are my like, uh, bread and butter. Okay. And so if I did like a three month phase of Olympic lifting, but after let's say I'm do doing a clean and jerk on Monday for like 30, 40 minutes, maybe like the rest of the 20 minutes, I can do some supplemental stuff with like landmine and kettlebell. Okay. That's what I was kind of thinking. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, why, yeah. that's why I, the, the original qu thing that I said was, I mean, what Adam's saying, yeah, yeah, your experience will be able to dictate that. Because like, you know, again, if you look at established Olympic lifting routines, powerlifting routines, kettlebell routines, you know, the, what you're looking at is time tested routines with good programming. People have used them. They know this combination works and it works well. When you mix different elements in together, you know, you, you you know, you might have a recipe for a cake and a recipe for a pancake and a recipe for a waffle and say, well, they're all taste good. I wonder if I mix everything together if it'll taste good. Yeah. We don't know exactly what the combination well, is. That's why we like to do blocks, right? Yes. And we like yeah. to kind of focus on like developing those specific skills or adaptations. Yeah. And, and maybe if you could wrap your head around what that really looks like in terms of like, well, am I trying to focus on power specifically? 
right? If that's your goal, like then that's where Olympic lifts makes sense. That's where like maybe using um, kettlebells in, in with that type of like power dynamic, um, you know, you can kind of structure it that way a little more effectively. And that's why I kind of was referring to mass performance because we were trying to look at like building foundational strength. What do we do in this block? You know, and let's develop that. Now the next one, it's like people don't move in planes, you know, effectively and aren't strong in different ranges of motion. I'm going to, you know, gather all these exercises that make sense for me to kind of, you know, gear and steer them in that direction to build and develop that like strength. Um, and then, you know, move into power itself or speed power, uh, and then conditioning all on its own. So, you know, if there's a way you can kind of like take elements from that, especially like landmine too, it's like amazing for, uh, power and, and the being able to move with acceleration with weight. Uh, so you combo that in, in there and you just kind of focus on, <clears throat> but again, power, you want to really reduce the amount of fatigue. So you got to account for that. So, I mean, that's as good as I can no, you, do in you, terms no, of trying no, to organize Justin, this. you hit it. I didn't even think to, to with your background of, as a trainer, to Sal's point, like you, you, you're you going to have a good handle on this. Literally, I would do what Justin's saying. I would take our our MAPS performance advanced, the blueprint of that, like basically how we have the phases, and then your expertise of knowing like, oh, this is what the, these guys are trying, the adaptation they're going for is explosive training. I'm going to take some of my Olympic stuff and I'm going to integrate it into that phase. And then you see other things where it's like, oh, foundational strength. Okay, I'm going to take some of my powerlifting exercise I like and I'm going to integrate it in there. So use our the way we've mapped out that program, but use your experience and knowledge in all those different modalities to insert and change out the exercises. That's probably the best way to do this since you already have a good handle on those modalities. We've already laid out kind of a blueprint of going after specific yeah. adaptations. Yeah. Uh, that might be the best the, uh, answer. Because yeah. okay. the why for all that will require us to have like our hours long podcast <laughs> uh, to cover. If you want two easy answers, answer easy answer one is follow those trainings in blocks or answer two, I think give maps and maps performance advanced a shot and follow it as it's laid out. Yep. Don't worry about all the other stuff. Just follow it as it's laid out and what you're looking for in terms of how you feel and move. I think you'll get from the program. I mean, that's a good point too, Sal, because uh, I know you like animal flow, but we address mobility stuff. Just, you can do your animal flow stuff instead of the mobility things in there. I'm fine. I with think that. if you follow Ma maps performance advanced, just as it's laid out, I think you'll get what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. And then, so as far as programming, all that stuff, like all that stuff that you said, so would it be, so I know performance has like month to month phasing. And so like Justin said, like the month one could be like strength for power focus and then going from there and then um, adding in like supplemental stuff in between or like the, at the towards the end of the workout, is that kind of what you're getting you guys are getting no at, no or? if you if you follow the programming like we the way you would do it is the the only thing that you would add or change in that program is you would take out an exercise and put in something that you want so if there's like let's say let's say we're missing because we don't have a lot of olympic lifts like traditional olympic lifts in, the, oh. in any of our programs so if there's like a a phase where we have you doing an exercise where you're like oh I, you know i'd rather so do phase three right i i i, I want to do an olympic lift right here then but pull, it has to match yeah though. it needs a match you don't, don't replace dumbbell curls and that that they're in there but, right you right know. right it needs to it needs to replace you need to replace a movement. don't add to the program take out something that you don't want to do replace it with a movement that you want to do and it'll make sense in that phase on what on what to replace and if you add anything it needs to be like animal flow all the like all the other modalities like you're gonna get mo we have landmine inside yeah. there we don't have kettlebell inside that but you could easily switch out some well, things that or we do traditionally in there right? yeah we do so if he's talking about uh, performance advance we do have like some kettlebell we have landmine specific exercise we and, and it's structured within like if power was my focus here's how i'm sprinkling that in as the skill i'm focusing on it's it's lower intensity this the the training between that but then now we reduce it down to like two two basic like foundational strength days per week and you're just supplementing that the rest of the week with low you know to moderate yeah. level intensity uh real hyper focused on the skill so uh if that makes sense to you like you could really go through that and get all the ideas of how to structure what you're talking about um by just you know deliberately going through that and kind of okay, this is how, you know, they pulled these exercises and put it in for this phase. Um, I can do that with all those other pursuits. I mean, Tay, you're in our forum too. So like, I'm like, follow the program and then you don't, I mean, check in with us. Just go like, hey, I'm thinking about pulling this out and I'm going to put this in. What do you guys think? Yeah. 
and we'll and run, run a bias. If you don't already know, I feel like you're going to have a pretty good. I think you're going to be able to to do do a lot of this on your own. But if there's something that you're not sure about, just post in the forum and say, "Hey, I'm following the maps and performance advanced. I want to pull this exercise out and I want to put this one in. What do you guys think about that? You think that's a good move?" And then we'll tell you yes or no. Oh yeah, for sure. I like it though. I like uh, all the modalities that's you're doing. Pretty bro. much it. Yeah. All right, cool. Make it good. Thank you, thank you. And then one last thing is, uh, can I ask one last thing? Go ahead, sure. For that, since everything um, is like very skill focused, would it be, I mean, obviously like, would it be beneficial to focus on like these months of like just going like medium, light to medium weight, but just like focusing on just the skill asset of it. And then once I, because I'm still kind of recovering from the injury and then uh, yeah. once I yes, feel better going. Absolutely. That's why I think, power, okay. I think performance advance is really like going to be perfect for what you're talking about. Like it's literally structured like that. So um, yeah, go through that and and you're, you're going to get a lot of what you're trying to figure out just by going through it. Perfect. And then right. just one last thing, um, <laughs> okay. uh, if I can. Go ahead. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. You're good. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm in San Francisco. Uh, my gym, we're completely outdoors. And so I know you guys have talked about, well, oh, is there like a completely outdoor gym? Like today it's sunny. I can show you guys um, in a container, but we have a full set of gyms uh, equipment out there. Awesome. And so okay. if you guys are in the up in the San Francisco area, let me know, and then we can do awesome. some uh, – Workouts together or something like that. All awesome. right, man. All right. Appreciate yeah. that, Tay. Thank you. So, thank you, guys. All right, man. Got it. Homes. Take it easy. Have a good one. One of the workouts is uh, to fight off the homeless people. <laughs> 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 oh, sorry. Yeah. It's, it's apocalyptic uh, training. Uh, that's I, terrible. A, a typical like uh, trainer, right? Like just fucking that loves what he does. You love that though. I mean, he's doing all yeah. kinds of. Yeah, yeah. Gonna be. I, I bet if I were gonna look at here. Look, with my experience, if I were going to learn or train in any of those ways, I would follow programming based on that. Because I, when you mix things together, Justin hit, Justin hit that on the head. I don't, I don't even know why that didn't even dawn on me. Because yeah. I, I was looking at all this stuff, I'm like, fuck, how would I like sitting yeah. right now try and piece together? This is like what we do, when we try to create a program. It's <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. It takes I, a yeah. long time. I need a three day. I need three days, bro, to sit down and really think this out, like to to try. But then you're right. We the you follow mass performance, and then you you literally can take. The, the things that maybe he's he we don't have in there which is what actually really covers most of that stuff yeah uh, and then and then learn as a trainer you should know how I to mean put. even the rotational skill in there is going to cover a lot of the animal flow stuff so if he goes through it he's going to be like oh okay it's going to make a lot more sense yeah look we have a lose body fat guide at mindpumpfree.com it's totally free check it out you can also find us on social media Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin I'm on Instagram at mindpumpstefano and Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam 